Hi everyone, I was actually working on something and in the middle of the process I got some interesting result that I wasn't expecting, but I decided to pursue it and this is basically the result of it. So it's some sort of happy accident I could say. Uh, and in this tutorial I will show you how it's done. It's fairly simple setup and it gives you this uh, result. It's of course fully procedural so everything here is uh, adjustable. And yeah, let's see how it's done. So let's delete everything, uh, create a UV sphere and also make sure that you have the node wrangler enabled because we will use it later. Let's start by adding a subdivision surface modifier so that we have a little bit more geometry to work with with the displacement and shade smooth. Uh, let's click tab and go into edit mode. Now select all vertices and add a new vertex group. Remember to always name it appropriately. And make sure that all the vertices are assigned to this group. Now let's go to the modifier tab and add a vertex weight proximity modifier. And in the, verte in the vertex group uh, field, let's choose that group that we just created. And for the target object, we need to create new, so shift A. Uh, it can be just empty plane axis, doesn't really matter. Let's bring it here so that you can see it. And in this modifier, let's just click this eyedrop icon and choose the object that we just created. Let's also name it something like uh, this place controller because that's what it's gonna do. Now let's go back to the sphere and let's change the proximity mode from object to geometry. And now if you go to weight paint, you can already see that it's working and you can uh, adjust that uh, with those two uh, numbers, the lowest and highest, basically controls how big uh, the effect will be and also the fall off, how soft or harsh it will be. So that's all right for now. Let's go back to the object mode and add a uh, displace modifier. Here we will need a, need a new texture. So let's, let's just click new uh, texture. Let's name it properly as well. And with this icon, let's go to the texture tab, change it to clouds. Uh, it can stay like this for now, doesn't really matter. And in the displays modifier, let's change the vertex group to the vertex group that we have. And this way, the vertices that will be affected by the displays are the only ones that are in proximity of this plane axis empty. That's why we needed it. Okay, so that's already quite cool. Uh, but now let's give it a little bit more life by animating the noise. For that we will need a empty, uh, let's choose cube, that's alright. And uh, let's also put a keyframe by simply pressing I on the keyboard and then choosing the rotation with the on the first frame. Now let's move to the last frame. Uh, let's rotate it on the x-axis by 360 degree. Click I again and rotation again. Now if you click play, you can see that the cube is rotating. One more thing, make sure that in the interpolation between the keyframes is set to linear, not bezier. You can simply do that by pressing T when you hover over the timeline and then just choose linear. Yep. This way it moves in a constant rate. Okay, and now let's click on the sphere. And in the displacement modifier, change the coordinates from local to object. And the object will be the cube that we just created, this empty cube. And as you see, with the cube rotating, the noise gets affected as well. And everything looks much better. Uh, you can of course also adjust like the strength to make it bigger. And let's leave it for now. Uh, let's move on to the material, the second part of the, of the effect. So let's go to the shading tab, switch uh, the world opacity to zero and create new material. Also remember to name it. And you can delete the principled BSDF shader because we will not need it. Now the setup is really easy. So let's just start with a gradient texture. 
and because we have the node wrangler we can just click ctrl t and that gives us the texture coordinate and mapping let's change the texture coordinate from generated to object and the gradient texture from linear to spherical and now if you click ctrl shift and left mouse click on the node it will give you a preview of uh, what's how, how does it look like on the model and let's also turn off the displacement uh, modifier for now so that it doesn't bother us and in the texture coordinate in the object tab let's just choose the same empty that controls our displace this way the displace controller is also gonna control where the, the, the color the texture is gonna show up so it's basically gonna be aligned with whatever the, the displacement comes in all right now let's add some distortion to this uh, very fine edged uh, gradient let's get a mix rgb node and a noise texture let's plug color to color and the vector to another color change mix to linear light and plug the result to gradient texture input this way you can control the edges basically of the of the spherical mask let's maybe give it some distortion less roughness let's adjust the scale maybe roughness a little bit that looks all right we can always uh, come back to it later now let's get a color ramp node and change the interpolation from linear to constant and we can start by laying out some colors so let's go with maybe yellow orange and let's make it uh, pretty basic so the third one is gonna be red same thing we can adjust it later and it's good to always add a val input value at the beginning to control the scale so that if we want to make this uh, area bigger or smaller we we can easily do that just by manipulating this value so let's keep it at something like this for now now what else we can do is we can uh, animate this this noise so let's just bring up the timeline for now let's change the timeline uh, let's change also the noise texture from 3d to 4d and change this w to a driver so just type in hashtag frame um, divided by something like 25 maybe uh, maybe it's a little bit too fast so maybe 50 yeah that sounds all right let's maybe also change the, the base color from black to something lighter maybe like brownish and we can uh, put in more colors just to give it this uh, cartoony look so like some black edge just just slight uh, maybe some lighter color here also just a little bit all right when you're satisfied then at the end you can add an uh, emission shader that you plug it all to and then the emission goes into surface you can delete the viewer already and in the emission you can basically control how much emissive it is and you can go into the render tab turn on bloom and control the intensity at this point we can also go to the modifier tab and turn back on our displacement modifier maybe bring down the strength a little bit seems too extreme and we already have this uh, ba this basic setup that lets us have this uh, this effect of course the colors uh, would have to be adjusted there's a little bit too much white on it to my liking but yeah that's something you can play around with all right so the first part of the whole setup is already done it's the the back flame now for the blazing air this whooshes whatever you want to call it we will need another sphere so let's just add another uh, mesh uv sphere and let's make it a little bit bigger than the previous one Let's also stop it so that we have some more performance. 
and we can also move this uh, cube a little bit lower so that it doesn't obstruct our view now let's go into this uh, sphere click uh, shading and let's give it a new material that's gonna be the uh, i'm gonna call it air whooshes and also we can delete the principled bsdf now let's start similarly but by adding a, a gradient texture and again ctrl t and as well let's add a noise texture and a mix rgb node yep let's also connect those color to color vector to color and then the result goes into the gradient texture and let's also change the mix to linear light and let's bring it a little bit lower and preview how it looks like for now let's also make sure that the texture coordinate is set to object all right so right now the mask is as we can see half a sphere so that's actually something that we want but not in uh, not in this direction so we have to rotate it on the uh, z axis by 90 degree and let's also adjust this mask so that it's not uh, too regular so maybe let's lower the scale a little bit add some distortion maybe some roughness and change it from 3d to 4d so that we can animate as well so it's a little bit more dynamic uh, let's give it a frame divided by 50 maybe let's see yeah, so that's basically gonna be our mask that's gonna control where the wishes are gonna appear. So we can already add a transparent BSDF and emission BSDF, uh, sorry, just emission and a mix shader node. Let's plug both of those here and the factor, let it be the gradient texture. And now let's see how it looks like. Uh, also, you need to go to the material tab and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha clip. As you can see, the mask is already working. Now we can focus on the wishes themselves. So for that, we can actually copy this setup because we will basically use the same. So just select everything, shift D, move it a little bit lower. Uh, we can also reset this rotation to back to zero. And for the wishes, uh, we will use a noise texture, so you can just duplicate that one. Now, as you can see, it looks kind of like mess, and it doesn't have this directionality that we would expect, sort of uh, rings uh, shapes. So we can adjust that actually in the mapping node. Simply make the Y uh, much bigger than X and uh, Z. The X and Z actually can be lower, maybe like 0.3. And the Y maybe something like 2, 2.5. So now you can see that it has those um, directional uh, kind of ring uh, lines that we can work with. And let's add a color ramp so that we can add a little bit more uh, contrast to it. Let's bring it up a little, this one as well. Maybe like this. Yep, that already starts to look okay. Now we can also uh, animate that as well. So let's do it in the mapping node. Uh, in here we play with basically two values. First will be the uh, location, so that they're moving outwards. And also the rotation, so that they basically just go around one way. Uh, so to do that we again use the driver, so let's do hashtag frame divided by 15. Oh, now it's going in the wrong direction, so we can just uh, put minus before that. And now they're moving out. Okay. Now for the rotation, same thing, frame divided by maybe 20. And yeah, that's, that's alright for now. Now let's make sure that it only uh, happens in half of the sphere, like we don't need those wishes back there. So uh, let's make some space in here, add a mix RGB node, and let's mix the result 
of this color ramp with this gradient texture and change it from mix to multiply let's see how it looks like uh, let's switch those up and down and bring the multiply all the way up so that's basically what we need looks alright and now we can start playing in some colors so let's add a color ramp after the mix RGB node change it from linear to constant again and same as same process as before let's just start laying in some colors so first maybe some neck red let's bring it all the way up add another one some more yellowish uh, let's also bring the value from 1 to maybe like 3 so that it already has some sort of shininess this one also maybe 2 maybe a little bit more like this and maybe some darker color to it as well Let's switch those maybe, something like this. Yep, and let's add another node, this time a math node coming out from the same multiply and change the mode to greater than and this will be plugged as our ultimate mask on the mix shader factor. So now if you uh, check out the mix shader with the math node, you can control how much uh, is it visible, how much of the of the whooshes are visible. And now if you connect this last color ramp into the emission, then you get the sort of final effect. You can control also like how much is it uh, visible. And then in the color ramp, you control the colors basically, which one goes where. So again, you can uh, yeah adjust it to your liking. Uh, now, last thing that you can what you can do is uh, maybe stretch it out a little bit on the y-axis, move it slightly so that it doesn't have this perfect spherical uh, shape, but rather this egg shape. Now in play, you basically have a very similar effect to the one from the intro of this video. So yeah, this is it. As I said, very simple setup. Just a uh, weight, vertex weight proximity and the displays connected to the empty that's connecting everything. And then the air wishes is just like a, just an alpha cutout uh, of some noise, basically. So hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. And if you managed to do something with it, let me know on my socials. You can find the link in the description. Also, the blend file will be available on my Gumroad, so let's name it appropriately, Gumroad Meteor. If you don't feel like following it, but you would still like the, the shader, the notes, then you can get it there for free. So that's it for today, and see you in the next one. Bye bye.